Hey, what's up guys? Mills here, and if you haven't noticed, today we're talking about the Chewy tablet, or Chewy, or Chewy, depending on how you want to pronounce it. So it's the holiday season, so you're probably thinking, ah, oh, I want to buy a tablet for myself, or for my kid, or for my wife, or... So you know you want to buy some tablets for the whole family tree. And you come across these brands. Now this one is a Chewy tablet, but there's also other brands like Vulcan Omega, uh, Imatic uh, Tech Class, which are pretty much all the same thing. They can be the rebrands of the same tablet. Sometimes they have original designs, but it's mostly the same thing. And you're telling yourself, oh, that's a great tablet, and it has an Intel processor, and it supports Windows and Android. This is the perfect gift. Well, that's why I'm here, because I want to put it to the test. So first we'll talk about the Chewy Hi 10 Plus, which is this tablet that I have right in front of me. And I want to start with the design because after that, when we talk about performance, this is going to be something that is going to be valid for all of those tablets that have the same Intel Z8350 processor. So let's take a look at the design, shall we? It's pretty slick. You get a 700 gram tablet that's a little bit chunky at 8.8 .8 millimeters. The funny thing is really the way that they describe it on their website. Check that out. To improve the whole intensity of the tablet, the Hi 10 Plus adopts the metal body. The edge is finely crafted with a dual tracked CNC process. The exquisite metal body and firm metal quality brings you a smooth experience. That's what they're talking about, like right here. In other words, this is an iPad first gen, but with a camera in the back, which isn't that bad of a thing. I mean, the first generation of iPads were thick as hell, meaning they were like very, very durable. Now, if we look at the display, I'm actually really surprised at the quality. It's 1920 by 1280. I know it's not as good as the QHD that we have now in tablets, but it's quite good. It has a three by two aspect ratio. It's 10.8 inches and it gets really bright. Uh, it has 450 nits, but you have to look at the description on the website again. This is even more confusing. Taking in all the sites with our 10.8 inch HD original surface, full view, large screen, high 10 plus with one all metal body, just one, embedded with our surface big screen 1920 by 1280 resolution, three by two, supports for, <laughs> It's so confusing. Supports for 2K HD video playback. The display effect is clear and exquisite. And the color is bright and vivid, adding to the three by two screen ratio. What? When did this sentence end? The main thing that irks me really is how thick the bezel are. I mean, they probably could have done a better job at that, but this seems like a cookie cutter tablet, meaning many manufacturer will use this form factor and just slap a different logo on the back. So let's talk about connectivity. You get one SD card slot for expansion, one type C connector to charge and connect, a micro USB, one micro HDMI, a headphone jack, mwah, thank God, and wide eye output which is pretty much dead since Chromecast and Smartcast has started appearing on all TVs and smart devices. And since this is a two-in-one, you can actually connect their proprietary keyboard for some extra money. I didn't get to test their simple and intelligent soft keyboard or the pen because I was looking for a replacement for my iPad, which died a tragic, tragic death. You should not put a tablet on the floor when your chair has wheels and rolls around very easily. So yeah, connectivity is pretty good, but that brings me to the speakers. So the speakers are terrible. They're not powerful. They sound tinny, annoying. They're stereo, but they're side firing exactly where your hands would be placed when you're holding the tablet upside down. I mean, it's a tablet. You should be able to hold it any goddamn way you want, but the speakers are exactly here, which means if you're holding it like this, you can't hear anything. So many times was I wondering why sound wasn't working when it was just because I was holding the tablet on the wrong side. And even so, like I said, the speakers are just plain awful. Luckily, you have a headphone jack and it works with headphones, so. Oh, it also has Bluetooth, so you can connect uh, wireless headphones to it. 
Let's get to the meat of this tablet and so many other tablets, and that's its performance. So it sports an Intel Z8350 clocked at 1.44 with boost all the way up to 1.92 gigahertz. Now what does all this jingle jangle mean? Well, I'm here to tell you that if it's branded Intel, it doesn't mean that it's the best of the best, the creme of the creme. In fact, this is no replacements for a laptop. It feels painful to work in Windows in my opinion. It feels a lot like a netbook. Wait, you don't know what a netbook is? They were the first ultra compact laptops before tablets and ultrabooks were a thing. They were super slow and Windows took like three quarters of their storage space. And they just performed so poorly that some retailers just slashed the price to get rid of them as quickly as possible. I used to work at Best Buy, so trust me when I say that. Uh, Best Buy, I promise, sc sc scout. But how about Android? Well, if you tried to switch to Android using the app within Windows, but then got a weird bat file error, and then decided to shut down the tablet to find it unresponsive for about 15 minutes until you finally hold on the power and kind of do some jingle jubilees and finally manage to get into Android, well, it's not that bad. It's pretty much a regular old Android tablet with a middle of the road performance. The apps open quickly, the mobile games run smoothly, although I did try out Asphalt 8 and it doesn't run as smoothly as I would like. In fact, my other tablet, an iPad mini first generation, runs Asphalt 8 much better than this does. And that does say something about optimization in games for Android versus iOS, because the iPad mini scores a quarter of what this tablet scores in Geekbench. But most 2D games won't have any kind of issues. It will run super smoothly. But you gotta keep in mind that the speakers are still god awful in Android no matter what. Thankfully, there's some pretty cool things about this tablet. You get an actually amazing LCD with great viewing angles. The battery life is ridiculous. It seems even better than advertised. I actually played YouTube constantly on it for about eight hours compared to the advertised five. Although the screen brightness was at about 50 to 75% and I had it on battery saver mode. And the build quality is good, like I said, it's hefty and it feels very solid. The buttons are very clicky, but that's the sad part. I'm having to use the buttons as a positive for this tablet. I mean, for $220 US, you might be telling me, well, this isn't supposed to be a supercomputer, Schnoes. Don't be so hard on it. Well, that's the problem. For $220 US, you can get yourself a slightly older iPad or a really good Samsung tablet that's maybe one or two generations behind and it would perform a lot better. You wouldn't have Windows, but performance on Windows is terrible on this. And warranty wise, they don't even offer service in this great country of mine, eh? Let's make it clear. What I'm looking for in a tablet is pretty simple. I want it to be responsive, have good audio, as much expansion as possible, and a nice display. But this unfortunately fails drastically on some of these categories. So would I recommend this to a person looking for a more portable alternative to a laptop? No. But if you have a Chromebook, you're looking for a little more customizability like you get with Windows 10, and you don't mind waiting for things to load up a little, then this might be the Windows tablet for you. If you're looking for an Android tablet and are looking to spend a little bit less money than the high-end stuff, then this tablet might just be for you. By the way, I tried Overwatch on it, it's crazy, it didn't even go under s s and it didn't even dip under six FPS. All right guys, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully if you were considering this tablet, I've helped you make a slightly smarter decision. I'm Snows and by the way, I know my production schedule is kind of all over the place, but don't worry, I'm trying to fix that. I'm gonna try to make at least one video a week, if not two. I'm already starting production on the next video, so leave a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, leave a comment down below if your feelings are more complicated. Wait, that's Linus that says that, right? Hopefully you enjoyed the video and that's pretty much it. I got 20 seconds to kill now and I'll do some weird stuff. Ooh, it's cold. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like a real home, but behind this black tarp is literally the garage door and it's not well insulated.